you ever sat down to play the accompaniment for a concerto or an opera aria and thought, this does not make sense as a piano piece? Well, that's because it wasn't written for the piano. It was written for orchestra and then arranged or reduced for piano. And sometimes we as the pianist need to take the arrangement and alter it. Today, I'm going to give you tools to help you successfully play an orchestral reduction. I'm Rachel Ehring, and I help pianists take the skills they already have and turn them into income through a company. First, let's talk about what an orchestral reduction is. It's simply a piece of music that was originally written for orchestra that has been reduced into a piano part. These are usually accompaniments to concertos, opera arias, or sometimes show pieces, such as the Carmen Fantasy for violin. Musical theater songs can also be a type of orchestral reduction. The older shows were often written for full orchestra, but a lot of the new shows are written for a smaller band or combo. So a lot of the same principles apply to musical theater accompanying, but it's a little bit different. I'll do another video soon on accompanying musical theater. So back to orchestral reductions. These pieces were written for a solo instrument or singer to be accompanied by a full orchestra, and then they were reduced into a piano part because, let's be honest, most musicians don't have a full orchestra at their disposal at all times. So you might be asked to play one of these for a recital or competition or for a music jury. The most important thing that I want you to remember about playing orchestral reductions is this. You do not have to play every note. Unlike a Chopin piece where the composer precisely wrote every little note and marking that he wanted, these are arrangements and often it is impossible to play every note. So the first thing that you want to do when you get an orchestral reduction is to listen to a high quality recording of the piece with a full orchestra playing and have the score in hand. As you are listening, you are going to start marking your score. Mark important melody lines in your part that you wanna bring out. I like to use a shorthand for different instruments to indicate who is playing the melody line. So if there's a flute solo, I'll write FL above that line. You also want to listen for how the orchestra is supporting the soloist rhythmically and dynamically. This gets into the finer details of playing an orchestral reduction, but I do want to mention it. Listen to places where the soloist does rubato or changes tempo. Remember, with an orchestra, while they can certainly do rubato, it's going to be different than a solo pianist. In general, an orchestra is going to be more rhythmically steady, and the soloist will fit into that steadiness with their rubato. Another thing to listen for and mark in your score is places where the orchestra has a tutti section. That is, sections where the soloist drops out and the orchestra is playing alone. Two things about tutti sections. One is that you're going to want to play them with a full sound as if you are a full orchestra. And second, if they are long tutti sections, like probably more than 16 measures or so, you might want to cut them down for some performances such as competitions or juries. This is something you will wanna discuss with your soloist ahead of time. It also might depend on the instrument that you're accompanying. If you're playing with a trumpet player, they might be depending on that tutti section to give their chops a break. One final thing you want to listen for in the recording is if there are places where the reduction really doesn't do justice to the original orchestration. For instance, if there is a melody line that is left out of the piano reduction, you will want to consider adding it back in. Now that you have listened to a recording and marked your score, it's time to practice the reduction. As you start practicing, you might find more places that you want to edit the score, and that's fine. You will likely find places that are awkward to play or ways to make things more pianistic. An example of this would be extended repeated notes that might make more sense to play as a tremolo going back and forth between the two octave notes. 
One of the tricky things about preparing a reduction is that it can be hard to know what you are going to be able to do technically when you play up to tempo. So you're going to need to play some of these sections as close to performance tempo as possible to get a good idea of what you're going to want to alter. As you are practicing and seeing the notes you put in your score about different instruments, you want to try to imitate those instrumental sounds as best you can. Martin Katz has a great chapter about this in his book, The Complete Collaborator. But to get started, just imagine that instrument sound and do your best to copy it on the piano. If this is a new concept to you, imagine the difference between a soaring flute melody and a melancholy cello line. All right, friends, there's a lot more we could dive into, but this should give you a great start with playing orchestral reductions. If you would like to learn more, be sure to download my free PDF guide below called 10 Secrets That Every Great Piano Accompanist Knows and hit subscribe so that you never miss a video. I'm Rachel Erring. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.